Where in the world is Mr. Sinister? Should you be working on this new X-Force team? And what is the latest from the rumor mill? I'm answering these questions and more in this week's Monday Mailbag. And if you guys are ready for that, you know what to do. Let's go smash it! Valley Flyer. Ah, oh, what is up, Valley Maniacs? Valley Flying here. I am back. Welcome to the channel. It is another Monday, and that means it is time for another Monday mailbag video answering your questions from the Discord server. Now, if you have been wanting to leave a question, not sure where to go, the link to the Discord server is in the description. So if you click on that link, you can join the Discord server and potentially get your question featured in an upcoming episode. But without further ado, guys, lots of questions this week. Let's get to them. All right, first question of the week. Valley, greetings from Germany. Hope you're doing great. Building my X-Men now after unlocking Phoenix, I can't decide which one to choose for the fifth place, Storm or Psylocke. Why choose one? You have both. Uh, they both do different things. And depending who your opponent is, depending what kind of version of that X-Men team you want, I think Storm gives you a more offense version with a counter so she has the potential to apply uh, the way she builds up charges. Psylocke, I think, makes that team more of a defensive version of that team with those evades, removing more of those debuffs. So they both offer different things. And I guess it depends on your opponent. So for myself, I've built up both of them and kind of interchange them depending on who my opponent is. But yeah, I, I built up both. Uh, next question. What's up, Valley Vlad? Been watching your videos for a long time. I find them pretty useful. Keep up the good work. I am glad that they're useful to you, brother. Uh, was wondering, when is Fox X going to give us an inventory for the game? I always run out of gear. It's pretty hard to keep track of them. Uh, best of luck and stay safe. So I'm not sure when they're going to do that. It's been brought to them, brought to their attention for a while now. But... Uh, I guess the best thing to do in the meantime is kind of go to the war store. So let me let me go in game, show you what I'm talking about. But when we go to the war store here, we have these different orbs here. And, you know, it's not what you want, but I guess it's kind of a replacement until we get what you want. So, uh, for example, if you want to see how much orange gear you have, you would go here to this. Uh, this what, what, what button is this? I don't know what, but the information button, I guess. You click on here, you can go to the different pillars. So if we go to the left pillar, go to the gear drop. You can kind of see how much gear. So if I wanted to see how much of this uh, astral energy I have, superior astral energy, I got 30. So if I click on it, if I go down here, I want to see how much uh, alien spores I have. I click on that and boom, I have 70. So that's kind of how you can see what inventory you have right now. There's no better way to organize it. But uh, until they add something, a feature like that in the game, that, that's, that's what we've got to work with. Hey Valley, first time, long time. What do you think of using cores to reset a tune? Say like 2000 to 2500 to uh, bring them from T14 back to T1. Regretting my Captain Marvel and Ultron a bit for DD3. Could have used bio gear for Symbiote Spider-Man to start with Carnage now. Who well, would you want to reset if given the chance? Um, probably no one. I think I'm pretty satisfied with all of my T14 picks. Uh, Ultron did take a little bit more than I thought, but I've but I've also gotten a lot of value from Ultron, not particularly in Dark Dimension 3, but in other game modes. So I would not take back any of my T14s, but I do kind of like this idea. I like that it's a kind of a high cost. That 2000 core cost is pretty high, uh, which means that people aren't just be able to reset it every time they want it. So uh, I wouldn't be opposed to this, but uh, yeah, I like it. But I wouldn't uh, reset any of my tunes personally right now. Maybe maybe down the road with meta changes a little more. All right, Valley, big fan of all your content. Uh, thank you, brother. Uh, thank you for the work you put in and keep it coming. I have a six red star Punisher. He is about 150 shards away from getting to six stars. Is he worth putting the effort into upgrading? I'd say, yeah, most tunes are worth the effort putting it the, uh, the, uh, as far as upgrading. But the question comes, are they worth it more than other tunes that you could potentially use the resources on? And in the case of Punisher, I'm not sure he's worth too much of your resources right now. Uh, right now, he is on a defender's team or I use him on a defender's team. And you're right in your question. They're kind of falling off a bit. I don't know if they're falling off a bit. I, they haven't been in the top 10 teams for a while, in my opinion. So I'm not sure how much they're falling off. But uh, yeah, build them up. But I wouldn't I wouldn't make him a huge priority. It, I would build them kind of uh, put a heart on him. And maybe when you have some extra resources, 
put some put some resources in him, but he would not be my primary build or even my secondary build. Maybe something way on the back burner. But yeah, eventually it's worth building up, especially uh, because you know you, you still will be using defenders in late game, even if they're, they're not top 10, maybe not even top 15 team, but still, still worth getting all those teams up. Uh, next question, quick question. I have a six Red Star Shield security, four Red Star Nick uh, Fury. Wondering, when I buy Fury to six red, would it be better to put uh, operative in war over assault? Uh, so first off, I'm not sure if Nick Fury nowadays is worth that uh, investment to get him to six red stars as far as your promotion credits. I think there are other characters uh, in today's meta that'll take you a lot further. Uh, with that said, if, you're, if your mind is dead set on getting Nick Fury to six stars, uh, then not the worst decision. He's, he's not a bad character by any means, but uh, just there's been so many characters that have passed him by with this power creep. So I, I don't know if he's worth it now, but as far as a uh, war operative or assault, even with that six red star operative, I still think I probably would go with assault. Uh, assault's going to give you more crit chance, which means that you're going to get more turn meter rewind on that shield team. Uh, a s operative, she's going to give you some, you're going to get more focus with that. So you're going to remove some, geez, I can't talk. You're going to be able to remove some debuffs with operative a little more easily. And uh, her healing that she does with her stealth is going to get a little more, but I still think that's not worth the trade off for assault. So I would put assault in and uh, get more crit chance for your entire team. Uh, next question. Howdy from Perth, Australia. What is up, brother? Where did the seed theory business pop up from and content can content creators stop promoting it? Uh, I'm not sure who's really promoting it. I think people are talking about it. Uh, but yeah, I, yeah. I, as far as where it came from, I, there was one particular content creator that came up with it. Uh, it's much like crane theory. It's speculative coincidence. I think it is speculative. It can be coincidence, uh, but I don't think it's similar to gambler's fallacy, which is um, as you get more and more polls, you'll get better odds. Uh, that's not what the the um, C theory is. Basically, uh, and I've, I've mentioned this before, this works in other games. Uh, other people that have developed other games said that they do this in other games, but not sure if it's a Marvel Strike Force, so it could just be a theory for this game. But basically, every time you open the game or at certain checkpoints in the game, your odds of getting better things in uh, orbs when you open up get better or worse depending on what seed you have and that's kind of where this theory came about so if you're in a good seed you're more likely to pull better things when you're in a bad seed you're more likely to pull bad things uh that, that's kind of what the theory is so i get it. it it's it's probably just speculative but it's it's different than gambler's fallacy but yeah i i don't know if it's real i still i still succumb to it a little bit but uh with the knowledge that it's probably not real just more for fun than anything all right valley hope all is well what in your opinion or in your opinion who do you think will benefit more from the red stars in the new and improved x-force uh tough question there uh without uh, testing all of them firsthand but just off the top of my head i like red stars on damage dealers on healers there are a couple people that have that on their kit right now they have healing and damage thinking most in particular deadpool and x23 they both have some passive healing. Uh, X-23 just does her healing. Uh, Dom, uh, Deadpool needs to have some negative effects to have his healing go off, but they both will benefit from more damage, more healing. The other one that kind of does that is Negasonic Teenage Warhead. She doesn't heal, but she does apply barrier, and that's going to be based on her health. So that's going to be based on the red stars because that'll increase her health. So one of those three characters, my off, if, if I had to make a pick, I would say right now X-23. But uh, that, is, that is a very preliminary pick because I haven't tested all these characters out. Uh, odd question. In your domino red star opening, you pulled a three. Then you cut to her powered up at five red stars. Wondering why you didn't show the five red star pull. Uh, so that was in my domino video where I was opening to her, tested her if she was worth it. And uh, I, I think I said this in a uh, video in the final cut. I, I, I'm sure I mentioned it in one of the cuts, but basically uh, was not disciplined. Had some poor discipline and just opened red star orders before I went to sleep. And that's when I got her. So it was not recording. That's why I don't have a recording of it. That's why it didn't show up in the video. But yeah. 
was was getting a little antsy, a little impatient, and I opened that orb, and that's that's when it happened, brother. Uh, greetings. What is up from Tennessee? What is up, brother? Wishing you and a family good vibes during these strange times. Question. With these amazing mutant tunes in the game, how would you prioritize building them? Have a Phoenix, have Sinister, there's a couple other teams. So there's two real standalone characters that are worth building regardless of what team you have. That is that is a two that you mentioned there, Phoenix and Sinister. I think those are worth building regardless of their teams. Now, as far as their teams, we got four pretty much uh, the mutant teams that are either in the game or coming very soon to the game. X-Men, X-Force, Brotherhood, and Marauders. As far as their value, you got a couple war offense teams in the X-Force and the X-Men. Uh, the Brotherhood 2.0 is also a very good war offense team. And then you got a war defense team in the Marauders. So uh, just as far as their teams, for me, war defense is the least valuable. So Marauders uh, go very low on that list. Sinister is very valuable. But just building a Marauders in general, for me, I don't like war defense teams, so they're going to be on the bottom. Uh, as far as war offense, uh, the two pure war offense teams, X-Force, Brotherhood, for me, they have about the same value because their use as far as uh, in total in Marvel Strike Force is about the same. So that leaves X-Men. I think they're the most valuable out of them. They have the most versatility in the game. And I think you're going to see the most value from your investment and resources in the X-Men rather than uh, in multiple game modes rather than just those other teams. So for me, it goes X-Men, then either X-Force or Brotherhood, and then Marauders go last. But build Phoenix, build Sinister. They're the exception. Those are two standalone characters you should build regardless of their teams. Uh, next question, Valley Vine. Where do you get the MSF character artwork for your thumbnails? Uh, so that actually comes from the Envoy program. Uh, I've asked them way back in the day if I could share the artwork with the community. And for some reason or another, they said no. I'm not sure why. But just because I don't want to break NDA, I haven't shared that. But that, that's where I get it. So if you are a content creator, definitely reach out to Cerebro. See if he can put you on that program. If that's something you want to do. And that's where all the artwork and stuff is, brother. Uh, next question from the UK. What is up, brother? Don't know if you've noticed a new tag called Unity as well as the Lucky tag. For some reasons, it's purple unlike the other tag. Do you have any idea what this is for? So in my game right now, there's another tag. It's called the Unity, not, not Utility. But uh, it, it's actually all the same colors. I'm not sure where the different colors are. Maybe maybe in different versions of the game, maybe in an older version. But uh, for me right now, it's all the same color. But uh, the Unity tag was something that they brought for uh, America Chavez, I believe, about a year ago for her uh, Pride Month that was happening. And I think it's Pride Month again. Negasonic Teenage Warhead is a LGBT character. And so I think that it's a tag for some sort of event they're going to do with uh, Negasonic. So that, that is what I suspect. So that, yeah, that's, that's what I think it is. All right. Greetings from Brazil. Red reports that the health part changes has affected gameplay, meaning the gap between tier 12, tier 13 characters have increased. Have you noticed it? I have not. I have not. I've, I've, I've just thought it was totally visual because that is what... Cerebro said, and uh, maybe it's not. Maybe the actual health has changed, but for me personally, I have not noticed it. I have not noticed the gap between T12 and T13. haven't noticed too much as far as gameplay. Uh, do you agree with it or think the devs should change it back to how it was? Uh, and honestly, I think the reason that they changed it in the first place because I think they have some plans uh, in the future. So th I, I think they had a reason for it. I don't think it was just random. Uh, it might have to do with these ISO 8 rumors that we're hearing uh, about also. So it, it could have something to do with that just to make it simpler to uh, see. But I, I'm not sure. I haven't noticed it. Uh, first time, long time. Hope you're smashing. Well, brother, uh, what is the least amount of power I need to three star the tier six rewards in the Relic Hunt event? I have my hand team about 141k. I don't think you're too far off. I think when I seven star the event, I don't remember my six star, but when I seven star, I think my hand was about 180 or so. So that that is what I would shoot for. I think I use Sentry, Nobu, Electra, and I don't remember the other two. But um, yeah, if, if anybody recently has passed the six uh, tier six rewards with three star, have a real low collection power, uh, let me know in the comments what is the, the collection power of the team that you use. Uh, next question, Valley, love the videos. Uh, thanks for the work. Mid-game player, 2.8 TCP. Got lucky with a seven red star Black Panther pull. That is a pretty good pull. Rest of my Wakandans are three red stars all around 30K. I want to build up Black Panther 
in celebration. Wakanda forever. I am uh, worried about my blitz team. So it, it, it will screw up your blitz a little bit. Now, uh, back in the day when blitz first came out and when blitz, when people were still trying to figure out blitz mode, uh, one thing that you could do with an imbalance team is have that damage dealer way stronger than the rest of your team. Black Panther is a damage dealer. If you would have anybody way higher than the rest of your Aquanans, it would probably, I would pick either Black Panther or Killmonger to be higher powered than the rest of my Wakandans. So not exactly bad if Black Panther is the one doing it. Any other Wakandans might throw out that team a little bit, but I think Black Panther being more powerful than the rest of Wakandans actually is a good thing for the, the overall health of that team. Uh, next question, what is good, Valley? Greetings from across the pond. I'm sure I speak for most viewers when I say uh, you bring the vibe in your videos. Thank you, brother. Uh, my dilemma. A guy in my alliance runs Sinister, Hella Strife, Sabertooth, Loki. Around 100 to, uh, to 110 K total power. My goodness, I'm, I'm having trouble speaking today. All right. And is doing the damage in PvP with his punch ups. I can either boot him from the alliance, not likely. Yeah, I probably wouldn't do that over PvP. <laughs> or uh, get advice on viable counters, especially for Sinister. Uh, all right. So Sinister's a tough one to counter because you can bring in characters that can uh, kill him, but he has the potential to clone them unless uh, you kill him before his first turn. So some some characters that are potentially able to do that, possibly Captain Marvel, depending how strong that Sinisters you're going against. Uh, Phoenix kind of can be a good counter to Sinister, although with, uh, with Sinister in a person's hand, not in the AI hands, Probably gonna be cloning the correct person. So Sinister is kind of a tough one here because the stronger your team is, the more choices you get for that a uh, human version, that human to clone your Sinister. So I guess you can try to ban him. That'll throw off that Sinister and Strife combo. But uh, then you leave that Loki Hella combo. But depending who your team is, it might actually be better to bring in Sinister because after he does his clone, if you could kill that clone pretty quickly, it's not gonna be adding too much to that PVP team. So. Um, I, I know it's not a hard counter. I don't know if Sinister has a hard counter at this point. That's why. But be aware of that. Trying to ban. Trying to kill off the clone as soon as possible. Um, th Those are my two suggestions. If you guys have any other suggestions for Sinister in PvP, uh, let me know. The good thing is that there's no rewards right now. But it is good to kind of get a jump on these modes before they start to have some rewards that uh, people want. Valley, not sure about 100% MSF, but still related, was on recruitment pages the past few days. Is it just me? Or has there been an influx of I'm a new player from Swaga messages? Not really uh, updated with Swaga, but is this related to the recent ban of Arnold T101? So I'm not super familiar with it as well. I've talked to Mobile about it and he's told me a few things, but a lot of it did stem from that. I think that was more the straw that broke the camel's back though. What do you think Foxen can do to avoid these things happening to MSF and the community? So one of the big things, uh, like I said, there was a lot of issues with uh, capital games in the past, uh, not communicating with anybody, not communicating with uh, the content creators and just uh, not, not doing a lot, not adding a lot of content. So uh, Fox Next, AKA Scopely, I think is in a way better situation than uh, capital games right now, but it does have to do with the recent ban of uh, Arnold's second account. Uh, I think a lot of people are upset at that, uh, considering that they're making deals with cheaters in that game and then banning content creators' second accounts. Kind of weird, but I, I think a lot of it isn't just to do with that. It brought up a lot of issues with capital games and the content creators and the community from the past. And uh, that, that's what I think is happening. But yeah, we, we could be getting a lot more MSF players because of uh, that. Uh, good greetings from Colorado. Thank you for the great content and the passion you pour into your work. I'm a mid game player, just pulled a seven red star kingpin, but unfortunately, I've not put any resources into him yet. Would you recommend leveling him up? And if so, where would be a good placement for him? So, I would not recommend leveling him up. I ran into a similar situation way back in the day. One of my first good red star pulls uh, was a six red star. It happened to be on kingpin, though, and unfortunately, Kingpin does have some value in the game, but as far as pulling red stars, a lot of his values is a lot of his value is because of his kit. Uh, what he adds to the team with the offense up, defense up, the minions he summoned. I guess they're going to have a little bit of a benefit because of the red stars, but 
Uh, his main value is that offense and defense up, and that is not affected one bit by Red Stars. As far as uh, good teams for him, I have him on a Merc team right now. He helps that team a little bit. He summons two Mercs. He has some good synergy with villain characters, so it has some good synergy on that team. But uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't build him too strong. That's that's not the best character for uh, Red Star to, to be pulled for your Red Stars. Uh, Valley got a couple questions about ISO 8. I understand the feature is going to be different than, than when you tested it, but how much customization was there in a character's ISO 8? I'm hoping that uh, a character will not be locked into a single pathway like current gear. And when you tested out the first iteration of ISO 8, was there a mechanic that allowed you to reset a character's ISO 8 gear if you ended up with it, uh, not liking it, uh, how it was built, or are you screwed? All right, so couple different things here. I can't talk too much about the first iteration of the test server of ISO 8 because uh, I think it's still under NDA. So I don't think I could talk about any of that stuff yet. Uh, but I can talk about how it is in other games. Now, uh, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, since it was just mentioned in a uh, previous question, and since a lot of the initial parts of Marvel Strike Force was based on that game, they have a thing called mods, which is similar to ISO 8, where you can build up a character's stats, either a single stat or a couple different stats, like their health, like their damage, like their crit rate, di different things. Uh, and that's that's what you could do. So it's not just a single character path like uh, with gear. You, you could build up what you want as it's appropriate for that character. And what you could do, you could unequip these mods and equip them. It does come with a cost to unequip these, but it is something that you can switch out uh, whenever you want, as long as you're okay with the cost. Uh, and that, that's how it works in another game. Not sure how it's going to work in this game, because like I said, I did see some things on the original test server, but uh, they, they, they could be scrapping everything that we saw and totally going for something totally new. So I'm not sure what we can expect with ISO 8, but uh, yeah, if it's similar to how it is in other games, we should be able to modify character stats either a single stat, multiple stats, or maybe something uh, not in any other games like we did see in a previous data mine about a year ago uh, that we could adjust things like ability, energy, other things like that. So not sure, not sure. Uh, Got to wait. And uh, what I do know, I can't really talk about because it's under NDA right now. Uh, Valley Fly noticed the war store wasn't the one of the places Mr. Sinister showed that he was farm ball. I opened the tickets. They said he wasn't added yet. And for me to check msf.com for updates, Open a second ticket with screenshots of their blog post saying he was added to the war store. No question, just wanted the word out. And there have actually been a few questions on these, uh, but I think this is the first one, at least the first one that I uh, saw. Anyway, yes, I, I don't think he's in the store yet. I, I, I know their blog post said he was supposed to be added there. I, I was pretty sure I saw someone say that, oh, I saw him in the store. I got him. I personally have not. I know there's a lot of people on Reddit that have not. And I guess with the recent customer service tickets that I've been seeing, uh, he's not officially there. He should be added sometime this week, but it is a little bit of a problem uh, in the blog post a couple weeks ago saying he's going to be there. Some people using cores to refresh the uh, war store, seeing if they can pull them and uh, him not even being there. So it's a problem. And hopefully uh, for people that did spend cores refreshing the store, Hopefully they do provide compensation. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I didn't think he was that valuable to be refreshing the store for him. But definitely would. I am gonna start to farm him hard, at least the six stars or whenever I see him. But yeah, as of right now, not not there yet. Uh, have a seven red star, seven yellow star venom, four red, six re uh, yellow carnage. I know carnage is generally better for city nodes for dark dimension three, but. With the seven stars, is Venom better to take in with Symbiote Spider-Man? So for me, Carnage and Venom, very, very good characters and very, very close. The, the passive, like you mentioned for Carnage, is why he gets a slight nod over Venom for me. But with them being so close, you have a very good seven red star Venom. I'm definitely going to take in uh, that Venom if that was on my roster instead of Carnage. Uh, so normally, I would go Symbiote Spider-Man. Carnage, Venom, but in your case, I would go Symbiote Spider-Man, then Venom, then Carnage, just because of those red stars. So yeah, that's that's he's gonna be a little more valuable for your roster, brother. Uh, next question: When was the last time you actually followed one of the stories in event campaign? I don't know, beta. <laughs> I played this game for a lot of different things. Uh, it's, it's one of them is not the story though. So the story. I know there's a lot of people that say the story is really good in this game. It's not something that I've really read. So yeah, it's probably beta that I've read all that I've actually read all the stories. Maybe it was for a video since then, but 
I, yeah, normally I don't read the stories in the campaigns. Uh, greetings from Yorkshire, England. I love your, uh, and your, hope you and your loved ones are well. S same with you and all of you guys out there, brother. Today is a good day for me. Pulled my first seven red star vision. Only five uh, gold star, 23K collection power. All right. Question is this, should I still swap him out for Ironheart on my power armor team and use him elsewhere like BKT or should I stick him on power armor? All right, so, and as far as bon uh, T4s for vision, what do you suggest? I think his best T4 is gonna be his basic. I don't have any in vision right now, but if I had a seven red star, I think the first thing I would do is his basic. Some of the other ones that I haven't considered like his special and his ultimate, probably not worth it for most people, but with a seven red star, those are ones you might wanna consider also. The passive, little extra dodge chance, the little extra evade chance. I don't know if that's worth it, but uh, the, the basic, I think, is going to be his best one for T-Force. Now, when should you replace him with Ironheart? That's a, that's an interesting question because right now I'm building up my Ironheart. Still have not replaced my power armor, him on my power armor team. Uh, Vision is still there. Uh, what I'm waiting for is a solid, solid home for Vision right now. Uh, if, you, if you took Thanos off BKT and need Vision for that, you, you put him on that team right away, slot your Iron Heart in there right now. For me, I run Guardians. I was not using Thanos on any particular team anyway, so I don't really have a spot for Vision. You know, I, I, he might go on my Avengers team eventually. I might make a whole new tech team eventually, but right now, both of those teams are working pretty well. So I'm keeping him on my, on my Power Armor team, and then eventually I'm going to stick uh, Iron Heart in there. Now for War, you might want to use Iron Heart right now, especially if you're trying to counter a Hydra team because Ironheart will get that defense uh, down on Red Skull, which will allow him to take damage. Outside of that though, I probably would still be running my vision, uh, especially for Blitz, because you're gonna be losing some power unless your unless you're, uh, Ironheart is super, super beefy, but with that seven red star in your vision, probably not. So wait till you have a home for vision is gonna be my answer. If you have a solid home for vision, uh, then move them right away. If you don't, and you might end up losing some points in Blitz, then wait until your Ironheart is built up and then start working on a home for Vision. Uh, next question. My total collection power is around 2.6 million. Have all the tunes unlocked except Ultimus White right now. Want to ask you whether I should be focused on building Dark Dimension 3 or should I build up some good offense and defensive teams for war? As a background, I'm collecting all stuff for Tier 14. Uh, I'm satisfied with my rank in Arena and my performance Ultimus 7. So basically, Dark Dimension 3, one month later or sooner and have a wide impact on your game, uh, your suggestion will be helpful. Uh, I, for me, I, I'm taking Dark Dimension 3 very slowly. I mean, uh, I just, you you having this question just reminded me that I forgot to do Dark Dimension 3 the past couple of days. So I got to get on that. But um, not sure if it's worth going super hard on it right now. But seeing as how you're good in arena, you're good in the raids, you might want to just go Dark Dimension 3. The only other thing that I could see is building up some of your other teams for other game modes, maybe giving them more points in Blitz, making make, making them more effective in War. Uh, war is really an alliance type thing. So some alliances go really hard on War. That's a huge priority. Some don't. So it, it might be worth it more for you to build up some more teams for War. But uh, in general, if you're not really working on anything, then yeah, build them up to gear tier 14, get into Dark Dimension 3, and start with that uh arena and raids those are those are for me the two top modes and you said you're good there so you can pretty much work on whatever whatever is important for you uh how goes it valley always appreciate the weekly video you've answered many of my questions well thank you for asking them brother uh question on game mechanics i've noticed some time ago that moves that drain energy i.e minerva does not trigger passives to tie to health levels this had been advantageous advantageous at times when not wanting Marvel or security to auto taunt, but it also means Black Bolt's passive isn't always getting triggered. Is this the way these passives weren't meant to work or is this another glitch? I think this is another glitch. Hopefully it gets fixed soon. I know the recent update, they were supposed to be fixing a lot of Black Bolt's uh, issues, but uh, I've seen stuff. I've seen, uh, what do you call it? Screen recordings of this that is still going on. So apparently not all the issues with Black Bolt is fixed right now. Uh, Valley just filled in my last gold uh, gold star on my seven red star Falcon and boy does his ultimate hit hard just wondering if you think he's worth taking into gear 14 for dark dimension 3 uh, ready working on Phoenix and Black Bolt so 
the good thing is Falcon is actually a pretty good character. Uh, I don't have a lot of red stars on him. I, I, I have five. I just haven't built him up enough to really see the damage on his ultimate. But uh, remember that the enemies in Dark Dimension 3 are going to have a lot of health. So uh, he's not going to be doing a ton of damage in Dark Dimension 3, but his special will still be giving speed. Uh, with that said, he's a tech character. Phoenix, that is a uh, bio. No, that is a mutant character. Black Bolt is a bio character. So they're going to be using different uh, mini uniques there. So not the worst. But if you have other tech characters uh, that you're thinking of taking into Dark Dimension 3, maybe Minerva, maybe you want to use all your uh, mini uniques and stuff on Ultron, then uh, you probably want to wait on Falcon. But if you're not working on any of the other tech characters, then yes, go ahead. Build, build up Falcon and help. He can help you for that game mode, especially with his speed. So uh, yes, do it. Or, or not, depending on what, what tech characters you have. All right, Thunder Smash. What is up, brother? I'm just saying Hulk is my favorite Avenger all-time iterations of Hulk. My question. I'm set to unlock Star-Lord. My Asgardians are set for Black Bolt. I'm working on Sinister Six. What gear tier should I uh, and level should they be to safely unlock Invisible Woman and Shuri? So, uh, Casino actually did a pretty good job of uh, compiling the lowest scores for that. And as far as uh, Invisible Woman, the lowest score or the Sinister Six I've seen is about 59,000. So if you can get your Sinister Six up there uh, and are willing to do several runs of it because that one probably is not a first run, easy auto type thing. Uh, 59,000 for Invisible Moment and 69,000 for Shuri. Those are where you should build your Sinister Six to as for the minimum to unlock those characters. And that's the, that's the five star unlock, not the seven uh, star unlock either, but yeah. Those, those are the numbers you should shoot for for uh, Sinister Six. All right. And the next question, guys. Uh, are Sinister clones built off Sinister's max health? I Do I need to uh, T4 his passive to get the full effect? Back in the day, you did need to get the passive to have the passive t 4 on the clones. But uh, the health of Sinister's clones is based on Sinister's clones. All of our Sinister's health. All of the clones' health is based on Sinister's health. And uh, as far as T4s, if you T4 his ultimate, uh, all the uh, the T4s of the ult of the clone will be done. So right now, if you want the clones to have all their T4s, all you need to do is his ultimate. But yes, it is based on Mr. Sinister's health. So Red Surge does help the clones there. Uh, Valley just pulled a five red star black bolt. I'm going to be unlocking him in August at six star. I plan to use my promotion credits to take him straight to six star when I unlock him. Do you think he's going to be relevant for a long time? Don't want to use my promo credits on someone that's going to be a victim of power creep in a few months. So, you know, eventually every single character in this game is going to be a victim of power creep at some time. Black bolt though, I don't see him becoming a power creep victim for a long time. One thing is he is a legendary. Usually they don't power creep the legendaries too quickly after they're released. He's been up for about six months or so, so I don't think they're gonna do anything with him for a little while. But uh, one, the other thing I really like about him, his passive. I don't think that passive is gonna go out of style. That extra hit for 25, when they drop below 25% of health, potentially killing them, uh, not being able to revive those characters. I think that passive strong enough that he's gonna be relevant for, for a while. Uh, with that said, I did six star. I did use promo credits and gold promo credits to six star my Black Bolt. So uh, I, I think he is, but you, you never know what Fox next. Uh, next question is from New York City. What is up, brother? How do we fix teams when Red Star screws it up? My Asgardians were four Red Stars beside Heimdall. That was three. And I was able to always auto 8.3 in Blitz. Now I pulled a six Red Star Heimdall. Keep losing an 8.3. So. The good and bad thing about Red Stars is that it could give your characters more uh, uh, power. So in this case, it kind of worked out against you, uh, where I think to even it out, you're just going to have to build the rest of your Asgardians. Take them up as far as their level, take them up as far as their gear, and that'll allow them to even it out, especially your damage dealers like Thor, Hela. Loki is okay. He's more of a surviving type character, but... Uh, build up the rest of your characters. Now, the good thing is if uh, your one character is very weak, like, let's say you don't have a lot of gold stars on that character, you could kind of compensate with your red stars if you manage to have a lucky red star pull. But uh, sometimes it just doesn't work out getting a good red star pull. And in uh, this case, it, it, it didn't work out. So just build the rest of your uh, Asgardians if possible. Use some resources on them. Don't build up Heimdall too much because he's going to already have that power from that six red star. 
Uh, what is the best placement for Black Order? Thanos. Uh, I have Thanos besides Ebony Maw. Defeat Energy to Corvus Glaive besides uh, beside call for stealth wide taunting to stop melee chain. So remember that uh, Thanos, he's not going to be feeding energy when he's in power form. So with the Black Order, he's not feeding energy. As uh, But as far as their um, placement, I, this is how I have mine. I have, and I don't, I don't know if it's correct. I have call on one end. I have Corvus right next to him because Corvus goes into stealth. So that kind of stops chains. Uh, the rest of them, I just kind of place randomly. I have Thanos on one end and call on the other end. That's how I have mine. If you guys have a better placement, let me know. That team works out. It's, it's able to punch up pretty well in arena. Uh, auto pretty much every team in in uh what in blitz so that's how i have them but yeah re just remember thanos empowered version does not give out ability energy so his placement isn't as important as normal thanos hey there buddy from manchester uk i was hoping your input i was hoping for your input i've been playing msf for 336 days i'm doing dark dimension 3 got a good idea on the team lineups i'm building for each nose the thing i'm not sure about one I got uh, Sinister at gear 13. Do you think he's worth taking up to gear 14? At five gold, five red, I think he is. Um, he's not going to be valuable on every single node, on every single run, but he's going to provide some value on a lot of the nodes. CD nodes planning on running Venom, Carnage, Ghost Rider, and Symbiote Spider-Man. Not sure about the fifth. So just remember, uh, you don't need all five. To get into Dark Dimension 3, you need five characters at gear 14. After that, every subsequent note, you could go in with less than five characters. So uh, for myself, I'm thinking I might just bring up the Symbiotes. Just Carnage, Venom, and Symbiote Spider-Man for City. I'm not sure if I'm going to also do Ghost Rider, but if I'm going to bring up another one, it will be Ghost Rider. And I don't think I'm going to build up a fifth for that. So... Uh, that's what I'm doing. Uh, Vulture would work. Punisher might work. I know Punisher doesn't take a lot of superior uniques, so uh, mi or mini uniques. So that that might be an option for you as well. But I'm I'm probably not gonna bring a fifth into that city node. Uh, you don't need it. That's why. Uh, what is up, brother? Who do I take into Dark Dimension Three? Hella or Ebony? Same stars and whatnot. So it's gonna be dependent on the rest of your team. Both of them have value. I think Hella has a little more standalone value. So without knowing the rest of your team, the rest of who you're building in, I'm going to say Hella because when the AI attacks Greg, that's like a free turn for you almost. So I'm going to go with Hella, but Ebony Maw is very good. I think Ebony Maw is going to have a little more value when you're talking about Thanos and Cull because they have some synergy with him. Uh, and and when you're going up against hero controllers. So uh, that that is where Maw comes more valuable. But uh, in, the, in a vacuum, I probably would pick Hella over Ebony Maw. Uh, greetings from South Philly. DD3 question for you. It's a little bit away from the city portion. I was wondering what symbiote do you think was you would pair with symbiote Spider-Man? Definitely won't be able to do all three on the first run. So symbiote Spider-Man, I think, is the most valuable character for Dark Dimension 3. And kind of like I mentioned earlier with that question with the uh, seven red star Venom, normally I would go symbiote Spider-Man, then Carnage, because I like his passive, and then Venom. But if you have some crazy red stars on, uh, on your Venom, Go Venom first and then Carnage because I think Venom and Carnage are super, super close. But for me, it's that passive of Carnage that brings them over. But if you, if, if you got some uh, outstanding uh, red stars on your Venom that's going to push them above Carnage, then that should be the way to go. Uh, Valley Fine, do you think that if I run Sith, Hela, Star-Lord, Minerva, and Scientist Supreme, they could get through Dark, Dark Dimension too? Yes, I think they can. Eventually, they'll get through. You have the two most important characters there, Star-Lord and Minerva. Scientist Supreme might give you some trouble with a lot of those Deadpool nodes in Dark Dimension 2, but eventually you should get through it with that team. Uh, good day from Perth, Australia. I have a choice of using 150 silver credits to take one tune to five red stars. Which do you think is better? Symbiote Spider-Man or Hala? I want to take them both into Dark Dimension 3. I also can take Ebony Mod to four red stars and save some more silver five red stars later as I want him for Arena. By the way, Drew... He is invited over to the barbecue for next time he is in Perth. I will let him know. I think he's coming up a little later in his show, so I will let him know. Uh, as far as Symbiote, Spider-Man, or Hella, both are going to be valuable. I think Symbiote, Spider-Man, I've heard of people just uh, fully clearing that city lane with just Symbiote, Spider-Man. So for that alone, I would say he's going to be a little more valuable than Hella. But on the flip side, you're going to run into that cosmic lane uh, with Hella first. So you might want to do her first and then save up for uh, Symbiote Spider-Man. 
Either way, uh, I don't think either of these teams are wrong to put uh, more red stars on or to build up to gear 14 for Dark Dimension 3. Uh, it's just which one you want to do first. Both are very good choices. So uh, either either way, Ebony Maw is also a very good choice. Maybe not as much for Dark Dimension 3. I, I think Certain Node is a very good character, but I think he's going to be more valuable outside the game mode. All these characters, by the way, Symbiote, Spider-Man, Hela, Ebony Maw, all very valuable outside of Dark Dimension 3. So I don't think you're going to go wrong with any of those choices. Uh, Valley Flying, thanks for all you do keeping us sane. I'm looking at building a second Dark Dimension 2 for my first run as backup in case my top team is defeating. Uh, so a couple things I want to caution you about building a second team, especially for characters that you might not want to take into Dark Dimension 3 because there's not a lot of that gear that's spread around, a lot of that orange gear, and you might want to save, especially your catalyst, the orange catalyst, the red catalyst, the green catalyst, I know for myself, I'm running very short on that. So I'm not just taking any random character up to gear 13. Might actually be worth it to save some of your resources, unless like Call of City and Thanos, some of these uh, Ebony Maw, unless you're eventually planning to get them to gear 14 anyway, uh, it might be worth saving that in, and not running a second team, just taking longer into Dark Dimension 2. Um, but it, it depends what you want to do, but uh, keep, keep that in mind if you decide to build up that team. Not necessarily a bad thing to build up these characters because those are some pretty good characters, but uh, just just realize that you're going to be running short on orange gear at some point. So yeah, yeah keep that in mind if you uh, build up characters just for Dark Dimension 2. Uh, Valley, I have to thank you for the advice you provided my Dark Dimension 2 team. I use Groot, Invisible Woman, Hela, Minerva, and Starlord for your recommendation. Question is, which are these best tunes to take into Dark Dimension 3 uh, out of those? Uh, so Invisible Woman... She's okay. Hella, I like a lot. Minerva is very good. I don't have her built up, but uh, yeah, she does percentage-based damage. The enemies have a lot of uh, health, so she'll be doing a lot of damage, uh, especially if you could get some energy with her. Star-Lord is not a bad option. I don't think he's as valuable in Dark Dimension uh, 3 as he was in Dark Dimension 2. So uh, my choices out of those, Hella or Minerva, either one. Uh, as far as anybody else you should consider, I think Phoenix is the most valuable character in that game mode. So if you have Phoenix or are close to getting her gear 14, get her there. Use her in Dark Dimension 3. Uh, Black Bolt, very good in all game modes as well. And if you have Sinister, not the worst character to take in there. And he's going to give you value outside of that as well. So those are my other choices, brother. Uh, loving the videos. Coming to you from St. Louis with two quick questions. Hard to keep up on who's available, who's not. But is Call Obsidian available in the Red Star promotion? Uh, since Corvus and Proxima are. I have not heard that he is. Uh, they they said specifically that uh, Corvus was coming early and Proxima was in that store before they did that Red Star rework. And who do you recommend as fifth for my uh, time going into uh, Dark Dimension 2? I'm using Ghost Rider, Ebony Moss, Starlet, and Minerva. I have all at gear 13 already, except for Ultron, Phoenix, and Ultimus. I was thinking Symbiote, Spider-Man. Who do you think I uh, keep... Uh, yeah, thanks for the advice. Keep on smashing it. Uh, Symbiote Spider is not that bad. Uh, Phoenix, not the worst either because she's going to give you some uh, value. You know, maybe not being able to have that replayability value. You might have to refresh. Uh, you might have to spend cores to refresh her every time you want to do another node if you're doing more than one node in a day. But she's going to give you a lot of value in uh, Dark Dimension 3. So not the worst character, but Symbiote Spider-Man more survivable he has some self uh he has some healing that he gives himself but has a lot of debuffs for the enemy so maybe symbiote spider-man but uh, there's this phoenix is not the worst either unless you are thinking of uh, doing more than one uh, node per day uh next question long time watcher first time asking a question are there any recommended skill characters for dark dimension 3 all the good seem picks seem to be into other characters i agree I think all the best picks for that game mode are in other categories. Uh, for skill, though, there's a couple that uh, I want to mention. You got that Corvus and Proxima combo. Uh, is it, Proxima is pretty decent on our own. Corvus needs Proxima to be good. So if you're going to do one, I would recommend doing both, which could be very intense on your resources, so maybe not the best. Sif is also another option if you're going heavy on those Asgardian team. They have, she has that skill tag. And if you don't have that Black Order, could be an option for you because she's going to provide value for the Asgardian team outside of Dark Dimension 3. Punisher, I mentioned him a little earlier, also has that skill tag and very little cost of mini unique. So an option there. And then if you want to build up shield, they're, they're an option as well. Nick Fury is not the worst character 
wouldn't be my top choice, but he's not the worst character either, especially if you don't have some of the previously mentioned characters. So uh, those those would be my choices as far as skill. Uh, Valley Fist from, from Montreal, Canada. Started Dark Dimension 3 with Hela, Ultron, Captain Marvel, Black Bolt, Phoenix, but still need to work on a few more T14s like uh, Ghost Rider, Minerva, Ebony Maw, Symbiote Spider-Man. Do you think it's a good strategy to stop farming a node when you have a character to five stars to spend core refresh on farming gears to get those to T14 faster? Or will I lose ground and have a harder time catching up after? Just want your opinion on the best, most efficient way to progress. Uh, I'll, I will tell you what I do. I don't know if this is the best way, but for me, I usually have about three or four characters that I'm working on every single day. I spend um, energy to get shards for them. Normally, I'm not refreshing, but I'm spending energy to uh, refresh those nodes, get shards for them. And there's one character that I'm working on. That changes uh, usually I get them to the next gear tier and then I go to another character. So that is, that is the way I am gearing characters, especially when you're gearing characters up to gear 14. It's a very slow process, especially if you don't have all the catalysts that you need. So, uh, that's the way I do it. Focus on farming shards for a few different characters. Focus on gear for one character. Uh, I, I don't know if that's the best, most efficient way, but that is the way that I do it. Hopefully that helps. Uh, Valley greetings from the DC Metro area. Have you noticed the difficulty in Ultima seven? whatever difficulty jumped much more after the health bar visual fix my clan is at uh, difficulty three doing 60 percent and now all of us are having groups swept uh at or after the first boss node where the day before we were going to 60 percent so uh like i said with the previous question about the health bar uh visual fix i haven't noticed too much in it as far as difficulty change but i did notice the difficulty change in all of these ultimus uh seven nodes when they did the rebalancing, that selector, that uh, difficulty selector, uh, I thought it got a lot harder. Now, some days uh, I just get bad RNG. I go into a node and I get wiped out. I force close that thing, come back in again, and I just smash that node. No real changes. It could be that start tech bug, but usually when I do these uh, raids, I, I'm not doing a blitz match or an arena match previously. So it could just be bad RNG or something that I'm not noticing about this visual fix. It maybe it's not just a visual fix. Uh, I haven't noticed it personally, but I, I have noticing the questions about it. So uh, if you guys know anything about it, have any kind of a uh, proof that things are different, then let me know and I can pass it on to the devs. Uh, greetings from Boston. Have you tried Black Bolt, Minerva, Yo-Yo, Ma, Hella, and Ultima 7? They've been killing it for me on auto. Let me know what you think of this squad. All right, I have not tried it, but I'm gonna try it tonight and hopefully it can auto for me as well. I haven't and I haven't been autoing too much since they changed the raid difficulty, uh, add that slider in there. So hopefully I can be back to autoing Ultima 7 with that team. I'm gonna try it tonight and uh, I will let you know. Uh, Valley flying. So doing also 60% normal difficulty, Ultima 7, you get 150 T3s. 100% difficulty five for Ultima six nets you 180 T3s. Ooh, that doesn't seem right. There's something weird with uh, these calculations on this. Also, getting less raid currency for doing Ultima seven than six, Ultima six difficulty five. It seems to me like a step backwards. Granted, you get a few T4s thrown in for Ultima seven, but why take away 30 T3s? Uh, so I think, you know, for myself, the T3s, I have a huge surplus of, of them. And maybe they're just thinking that at a certain point, T3s aren't that valuable. I don't know. But something needs to be tweaked a little bit about the calculations for these raid rewards. Uh, in theory, I like what they've done. But I, when, when looking at the numbers, they don't all seem to jive like they should. So, um, yes, I, I think they wanted it to be a good thing. But I think their numbers didn't add up. So hopefully this is something that they will... Uh, fix a little to make the numbers add up to make it make sense to do some of these harder difficulties than uh, sandbagging it, doing the less difficulties for more rewards. Uh, what is up from the UK uh, with a new war store addition, including an option to spend saved Alliance credits. In your opinion, will you be spending the currency? And if so, what do you think it is best used on? So honestly, guys, I have not done uh, the calculations. See what is the best uh, from a numbers perspective, but just from what it's gonna get you. I think the two most valuable things are that Red Star Elite Orb because Red Stars, unfortunately, they're very valuable and kind of a necessary evil in today's game. The other thing I think it's worth is that uh, Orange uh, War Orb. That way you could get some mini uniques. You could potentially get some superior uniques with it. Uh, and that will get you into Dark Dimension 3 a little quicker. So 
it depends on what is uh, your priority, getting more red stars for your characters or getting more gear to get more characters geared up. I think both of those are the best places to uh, spend the uh, credits on. Uh, what is up, Valley Fly? And have a question about advanced basic catalysts. Do you buy them in the red, the raid store and war store? Uh, I buy them in a war a raid store every time I see them there. Every time I see uh, advanced basic catalyst or something that I have less than 50 of, I'm gonna buy it in the raid store. As far as the war store, I'm not gonna say I don't buy it, but I'm a little more selective when I spend that currency. Uh, if I want to spend on a purple gear, I need to. I, I make sure that I have enough currency so that if the store refreshes, I can still buy bitty uniques or character shards uh, whenever Sinister comes. Uh, he's not in there yet, but I want at least a surplus of some credits if I'm going to buy that. And if I'm buying especially purple gear, it, I need to have some surplus of it. Uh, the supply store, sometimes I actually buy it from there. It's not a great value, but once in a while, like I have all this gold and I need to hit some milestones. Where do I spend it on? That's where I spend it on. So uh, raid store, definitely. War store, maybe. Supply store, depending on what you're what you're doing currently with gold. Drew, 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 we're both from the same spot, down under, not in Australia. But I need to know, Drew, if we're going to need to whale harder, because I'm sure I shoot for the PG rating. Thank you, brother. Uh, you're going to need these guys to unlock the next legendary. And by these guys, I'm assuming you're talking about X4. So, Drew, couple of things. You have been invited to a barbecue and... X-Force, are they used to unlock the next legendary character? Ah, oh, Valley, good to be back here, mate. Ripper of a weekend. X-Force, unlocking the next legendary? It's possible, mate, but it's not a rumor that I've heard. At least not yet. All right, so X-Force not used to unlock the next legendary, at least not for now, but Drew, I'm gonna want you to keep your ear to this one, and if anything changes, I'm gonna stay on top of you to see if we need to start farming these X-Force characters, but Next question here, Valley. I am taking crazy pills, or am I taking crazy pills? Or could we get Squirrel Girl before Silver Surfer? How does this happen? Why can't we get essential marquee Marvel favorites in the game before this nutty crap pun intended? Never heard of this rodent heroine until Casino started joking about it. I think marquee characters, the greatest hits got to be available to build a player based Squirrel Girl. Bizarre. And how, and if she's good, how gross would it be for Squirrel Girl to be better than Captain America? I don't like it for this game. So it, it, it could it could definitely be running into that scenario because normally with these hero type collector games, they release these popular characters like Captain America and then he's not as popular characters as the game goes along. So definitely possible that with power creep, as we know it exists, it could be possible Squirrel Girl better than Captain America, unfortunately. Uh, but yes, I, 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 I don't think I would like uh, Squirrel Girl coming before Silver Surfer either, but Drew, What's going on? Is Squirrel Girl going to be coming to Marvel Strike Force before Silver Surfer? Uh, you know, I'm probably not as devil as you about it, mate, but I am hearing more about small rodents than gnarly dudes trying to hang ten. Ah, uh, cheers, mate. Off the Maccas for some grub, but don't worry. I will see you next time. All right, well, Drew, thank you once again for these rumors. Uh, nothing super definite this week, but hopefully we could get more definitive information on some of the follow-up to these questions in the coming weeks. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was helpful for you and hopefully your question got answered. If it did not, I still want to thank you for uh, leaving your question on the Discord server. Thank you for everybody that left a question there. And again, if you want your question potentially featured on an upcoming episode of the Monday Mailbag, make sure you use the link in the description to Discord. Join that there as a big community and you could ask your questions, potentially have them featured in these uh, weekly videos. And thank you guys for watching, and hopefully uh, it was helpful for you. Subscribe if it was. We got at least four Marvel Strike Force videos per week on this channel. Uh, check out my other channel as well, Valley Blind 76. Link is in the description. Just started playing Exos Heroes, super popular game, and uh, probably going to be covering that game on that channel there. So if that game does interest you, then uh, check that out. And I will see you guys next time. Uh, subscribe, Hulk, uh, description. There's links in the description. Check me out on social media. And yeah, now it's time for the Hulk fist bump, guys. Let me use this hand because I got a little brace on this hand. Hulk fist bump, valley flying.